thank you that you are able to anoint Berlin on this day of unity to celebrate you, Jesus, and how you bring people together and heal their land. God, I pray for Norbert and this confusion, the way that he can rationalize himself in and out of ideas so quickly. And I just pray that you will reveal yourself outside of his thinking, outside of all of his arguments and his logic and his uh, rationality. I pray that you would meet him relationally in a way that he won't be able to deny in any way. Pray for Norbert, that you'll clear his mind. In Jesus' name. Lord, as I was listening to Eric share about Oliver, who lives on the third floor of the apartment right outside his that he could point to, I just think of like your story, God, this story that you are writing in this season for uh, about Oliver and the shoes, his shoe store and his impact in his neighborhood. And I, I just thank you for that, God. And I, I think about the, the your story of the Arnhem neighborhood, Lord, and um. I think about, Lord, what is your story for Norman and Norbert? What is your story for Norbert? What is your story for Katarina that you are writing? Um, and so thank you, God. We just bless uh, Norbert and Katarina who've heard the gospel and ask God that that the seed that's planted in their heart, that God would, would bear fruit. We ask God for um your ministering spirits, your angels to come and minister to them. And we just thank you for continuing to put believers in their path. In Jesus name. Yeah. Father, I thank you for Oliver and uh, just the, the friend that he's become. Um, Father, will you protect his, uh, his marriage? Will you um, keep him and his wife Nadine close to each other and in you, grounded in you. Um, pray for, there's no foothold for the enemy to undermine their marriage relationship. I pray for their kids, for Zoe, for um, David, for Noah. Bless these children. May they grow strong in Christ. Uh, turn Zoe's heart to you, Father. Father, we pray for their business. Will you just bless them, Father? Please allow them to see um, their their store grow and thrive, so that they can be a blessing to others. Um, I just um, encourage Oliver with with the the work that he does. Father, I thank you for my my brother Christian that I get to play a part in his life. Will you protect him? Protect his him from from addiction. Uh, keep his, his marriage together with Suzanne. I thank you for bringing them together for their family. Um, this man has a great testimony for you, God. Will you just pour out your spirit on him, fill him with joy and life, and um, just mature him in you, Father. Mature him in Christ. May he become an oak of righteousness. And may the 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 discipleship chain passed from Christian to the next generation, to the next generation. Um, yeah, God, we just pray that his entire family would come to know you as well. Yeah, Father, as I'm listening, I just keep hearing the phrase, um, pour out your spirit. So would you do that? Would you pour out your spirit in this neighborhood and and on these believers would would you sensitize their ears and their heart to listen to you? I love how Dan prayed um, that, that the work of your spirit would bypass this, this guy's brain. Um, and and I, I ask the same thing, that that creative artistic expression that exists in Berlin um, would be a vehicle um, for an entry point for the work that you are doing. So we ask, we thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and we ask that you would do even more. Would you bring to completion this work that you've begun? Pour out your spirit, Lord. Thank you. It's about time to move on to the next 
uh, the next section, Eric. Yeah, I, I mentioned our teammates, the, the brooders. Our team has been in flux recently. Uh, we, we, and so that's the prayer request is, is for stability for our team. Um, in the last year and a half, we have sent from Berlin and from our team, one family to start a new team in Marseille and um, two other team, two, one other family and another teammate have left, not only left the field, but have left Novo. Mm -hmm. And so our, our team dynamic has just really shifted. I mean, even before those families left, we, we, there was another family. So we went from a team of 11 down to a team of four. Hmm. Huge, huge change. And that's really impacted um, what we can do in the city, what we're capable of. Um, yeah, it's just made things um, much more challenging. So I'd love for, for just some prayers for uh, protection. Uh, we've, we've been here long enough that um, what we've observed is that families are removed from the field in Berlin through attacks on marriages and kids. And um, yeah, and it's once, it's so hard to get people here. It, it, it's by the time you raise support and, and you know, move cross culturally, like Satan's strategy is just to take people off the field. And there's so just pray for protection. Um, the other, the other thing that I'd ask prayers for is um, we have the beginnings of a disciple making hub that um, I, I don't have time to go on the details, but there's a number of people that we're connected with and partnering with in the city who are, are catching the vision for multiplying disciples and churches. Two of those people are from our house church. They're also a part of another ministry that works with students in the city. And um, so as a team, our, our, our Novo team is feels really strongly that we have the relational capacity to pull, pull together some of these people in the city in order to co collaborate more closely. Um, so we just 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 pray for that um, that endeavor. Um, I don't know what the next step is. Like I don't know. I mean, I know who the I know the people we need to invite, and I, I, I but I'm not sure like what venue, like how to how to invite them. What am I inviting them to? And so I, I really appreciate your discernment and your prayers for that as well. So. Any, any, maybe any questions for me as we, before we go to prayer on that? My question is, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, finally. Good. Great. This may seem really strange, but what popped in my mind as you asked that question, how and how to invite them and what to invite them to, I just wonder, Perhaps it's someone else in that circle that's doing the inviting that you partner with. So, you know, like, is anybody else have that vision or know the answer to those questions? It's a good question. I'll keep that in mind, Kimberly. Yeah. I, I'm not visionary, I think. I'm, I, I think that Just falls one, on me. You know, that makes me so. think, bring to Eric the combination of mm -hmm. personalities and types that can accomplish God's vision for you there. And uh, it just, yeah. Anyway, I don't, I hardly know you. So I felt weird saying that, but. No, that's good. That's good. Ah, let's keep praying for it. You know, someone in that build, as you build trust with people with similar vision, Lord, we just pray you bring in the right people, you know, who, you know, you know who and what roles they'll have. Yeah. We can we can take about ten minutes, uh, ten more minutes on this. We've got time. So Eric, just, I want to pray. Are you hoping that most of the people who engage in the disciple making are are Germans? Is that the preferred? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 
that would possibly become staff or just people who would just dedicate to the work of discipling? Yeah, I don't, we're not looking for people to become staff. We're looking for people who will take up the, the banner of making disciples. Okay, thank you. Join us in that, yeah. That helps me know how to pray. Well, I'll start, and then I'm actually going to head out here in a little bit. Lord, thank you uh, that you are the God who uh, says that the fields are ripe for the harvest. And we also know that the that there's always too few workers. Lord, would you send workers into the harvest field? Um, would you give them a, a the kind of understanding that Jesus said when he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Lord, there is no more satisfying thing to being out in the harvest field. And Lord, the, there is a there is a, a world of joy in front of those who would give themselves to the disciple making endeavor. And so I pray that they would let go of lesser things uh, and that some of the people that have come to know Jesus and maybe begun to grow in Jesus, they would have a vision to be a worker in the field and they would want to labor. Uh, they would want to labor long. They'd want to labor hard. They would be willing to go to hard places. They'd be willing to speak the name of Jesus and to speak a word for him when those would speak down of him. Uh, we pray, God, for those uh, currently on the team. Lord, guard their marriages. I pray that there would be an overflow of ministry uh, from rich mar marriages rather than an attack on the ministry from marriages that have been uh, bought lies of deceit or deception or disharmony. And I pray, God, uh, for the kids, Lord, and uh, man, with, with, with Eric's kids and this, uh, was it Bruder's kids, Lord, would they just really thrive and uh, delight in the ministry rather than see it as something that gets in the way? Uh, so we pray, God, uh, for generations of disciple makers. And, and we pray, God, that when, when just one generation refuses to, to carry the torch, uh, it, it's so discouraging. And so, Lord, just pray that people would stay faithful into the disciple-making journey and trust that the Lord in his time is drawing people in their city. Now, I know, Lord, that you have given to Eric a vision for these teams and for this hub. But, Lord, it takes more than just one person. It takes several working together in prayer and evangelism and all that you call upon them to do. And Father, I am sure it's frustrating at times to have a team raised up and for some to vacate their position on the team and to return home. Consequently, the workload becomes more intense for each person. And I pray for Eric, I pray for others on the team, that you will somehow give them the strength and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to move forward. I pray, Father God, that you would raise up this hub that Eric mentioned. Uh, individuals there in Germany, in Berlin, who are catching the vision for what can be. Lord, we're grateful for those who are giving of themselves to a task that is beyond anyone's individual capability. And so, Lord, today in prayer, in agreement of prayer, we come before your throne and we ask that this team would be established and enlarged and intensified and that you will lead those key people to become part of this hub that will take the message of the gospel further. Lord, you know all the dynamics. I know so little, but I trust you with this matter and ask that it would be done in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I just feel led to pray for your healing balm over the team, over Eric and his family and over his teammates, Lord, um, and healing balm over marriages, healing balm over, over the children, uh, and also over the land, Lord. I'm not surprised that the enemy would try to bring division in marriages um, or to bring attack with, ch with children, missionaries on the field. But we say no more in Jesus' name. Uh, and Lord, yeah, 
just your covering God, your protection. Um, we just thank you. Just like Roger, I, I, I prayed and, um, for, for strong marriages, God, for, for strong marriages and for children that are healthy and in love with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus name. Yeah, Berlin's done with division. This is unification day. This is the end of that. And, and we didn't plan for it to be this day, but let's just celebrate marriages. God, I agree with Alice. We we don't stand for this. This is not our enemy's place. This is your place. Our enemy didn't create marriage and has no interest in it at all. But we do and you do because you love relationship. And so I prayed today, Unification Day, in a city that has reunified after a split, that you would work in marriages. Mm -hmm. And God, I just pray that Eric will have insight and discernment into the next steps. What's, what's coming next? Who is it that he needs to approach? Who does he need to encourage or redirect or um, involve in a new thing? I pray that you'll give him those um the pictures of those people in his mind, he'll he'll know who they are. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yeah, God, I just agree with Dan. Um, indirect ministry is so challenging sometimes. Um, God, I need to hear from you. I need to know and where you're at work and be in step with your spirit. Um, so speak, God. Show show me my part and what you're doing in this city with the people that you've connected me to and the spiritual authority that you've given me in their lives. Um, God, will you just uh, creatively show me the next steps? I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm open. I want to receive from you, God. I believe you're building something, doing something amazing in this city. I feel it. I want to be a part of it. And I want the people I know and I'm working with to be a part of it as well. We don't want to be, we don't want to miss out on what you're doing. We want, we want to be strategic and ready and available, and teachable and obedient. So God speak, just show us. I have a uh, blessing to just declare um, with Eric's ministry that he takes hold of the Lord's patience that he waits and sees and he takes hold of the Lord's patience while you're opening up for him, Lord. You're opening up these doors for him to step through, for people to see, team builders. And he takes hold of your patience. You give him your peace. Yeah, Eric, I sense that the Lord is inviting you um, to, um, or maybe what he's offering you is a posture and not answers. Um, so Lord, I want to stand with my brother, Eric, in a posture of expectation, in a posture of attentiveness. Um, we know that you have answers and solutions and strategies. And so we wait on you. Um, we choose not to strive or force um, or attempt to solve, which is so easy for me to do. Um, and instead, we choose to wait on you to bring the people. And we put our trust in you to open our eyes to who they are. Lord, we know that you love Berlin even more than Eric does, even more than his team does. And you have plans for life and hope there. And so we wait. We wait on you and we say, come Lord Jesus. I want to pray for uh, Katerina, the shamanist, um, Lord. You can rescue her and we trust that you will um, show her how to step into your truth as the only way to healing by allowing you to 
to supervise, to be at her head, to be at her head, Lord, that she would see you. Um, she would understand and step into the Holy Spirit, the truth, the way, the life in Jesus. So we just lift Katerina before you. And I do um, rebuke the evil one and ask you to um, bind him from Berlin, Lord, and to shine your light, um, binding Satan's darkness away from Berlin. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God, for the team there in Berlin. And I pray you'll bless them and their work. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to work to this next, this next section on the city of Berlin. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really encouraged by what I see happening in the city. When I compare the spiritual climate of the city now compared to when we moved here in 2015, it's different. Like the, the, the soil has been tilled. Uh, the barriers, the obstacles seem less. Um, there seems to be more openness, uh, which is, which is great. Like initially the idea of having a spiritual conversation with someone on the street, I mean, was impossible that's that's not the case now like i hear stories quite regularly of of the fruit of spiritual conversations um in public we had a there was a recent um kind of evangelist push evangelistic push in the city a couple of weeks ago in september and i i i've I heard that quite a few people, I mean, like more than 50 people came to Christ. Like that's, that's unheard of for this, for this place. So uh, I want you to celebrate with me the, the spiritual openness that we sense. It's something that we've been praying for, something that um, we've been expecting. And um, yeah, so that's one thing on the other, on the other end of it is the, the it, the darkness also seems to be intensifying as things become more open. So <laughs> there's this back and forth. Um, I, I've I've witnessed more drug use out on the streets recently. Um, I we we met a woman. Mir my wife Miriam and I were walking. Uh, through our neighborhood uh, a couple weeks ago, and a woman stopped us, and she, she, she her son would had been assaulted uh, not too far from our home uh, just the, the day the day before we talked to her. She was back at the same time the assault happened, trying to see if there were any eyewitnesses. And so th that's really unusual. Um, so just just pray for peace in the city. Um, that the gospel can spread freely. Uh, there's, there's, there's tensions in the city. I mean, the whole Middle East tension conflict affects Berlin. I mean, there's a huge Jewish population in Berlin. There's also a huge Muslim population in the city. And so there are regular, uh, there are regular protests on both sides for Palestinians, for, for, for Jewish people, and it's it can get quite tense. Um, so yeah, there's that going on. Um, economically, the city's not doing great. You could you could pray for pray for that as well. Uh, people like people, the inflation is not as bad here as it is in the U.S. But the, the People's euros are not going as far as they were. I think that there's a little underlying sense of tension that I feel about that. Um, yeah, and and you know, just from our perspective, uh, you know, our our 
our desire is to see multiple disciple making movements around the city. I'd love for you to just pray, pray into that vision for the city. It's 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 a vision that requires collaboration, teamwork. Um, Berlin is an incredibly diverse city. It's one of the most diverse cities in the world. 190 plus nations here in the city. So God's brought the world to us. And um, we want to see multiple disciple-making movements among different nationalities in the city. That's that's it, That feels so far off at times. But it's, it's um, Berlin has been exporting ideologies for the last 100 years, whether it's fascism or Marxism or communism. I mean, a lot of the big world-changing ideologies have found their spot in this city. And I dream of the day when Christianity is exported from Berlin to the nations. Why not? This is one of the least... Um, religious, most secular, atheistic places on the planet. Wouldn't it just wouldn't it just be just like God to use a place like that to export the fame and glory of Christ's name all around the world? So mm-hmm. join me in, in praying for, for that for our city as well. Okay. I've I've put those I, I took some notes. I put those in the uh in the chat and um, I have a quick question too, because mm-hmm. earlier we were hearing about refugees or immigrants movements with them and and then they're the ones that are going elsewhere. Um, and when I earlier this year when we left the Bulgaria conference, we had a layover in Frankfurt and the every, almost every conversation we had in that overnight with locals was about the tension with immigrants and refugees. Could you, does that affect in your life and ministry? Because that wasn't on the list. And if not, it's okay. But um, I'm curious it does. about that and the It the does. Like, I mean, we have, yes, it does affect us. I mean, we've had multiple waves of refugees in, you know, in the time that we've been here. First, the Syrian refugee crisis. We had numerous Syrians, Af- Afghanis. Um, Persians from Iran, uh, and then the second wave uh, with the Ukrainians. We've got more than 100,000 Ukrainian refugees in the city. But they're, they're, by now, all of the Syrian, Afghanis, Persians, they've integrated. Like they're, they have jobs, they're not in refugee homes, and so they don't, they're harder to find. Uh, the harder to seek out. Um, the Ukrainians don't look like refugees. They look like Europeans. Like there was, at the, when we fed the homeless uh, this last Wednesday, there were three or four Ukrainian men that stopped by and talked to us and that we couldn't communicate. They, they just... So that's, that's definitely a reality in the city. Um, in terms of tension, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, that's expressed here politically. Um, there is a, a ultra nationalistic right wing political party called uh, the Alternative for Germany. The in German, it's the uh, AfD, and they're like, an, basically a neo Nazi group, and they've they've gained uh, seats in parliament. And for the first time, they they have the majority of a not it's not Berlin, but they have a majority of they, they hold the seat of government in a state that's just south of us, and it shocked everyone. So there there is a there there is a reaction to um, uh, immigration. Um, we we have not seen like some of the some you some of the movements among refugees that have spread as these refugees have traveled along the refugee highway around Europe, we've not seen that hit here. Um, 
But I have heard that about 10% of the Persians who have come to Berlin since 2015 have found Christ. That's pretty incredible. So, yeah, that's a very mixed answer to your qu great question. Uh, I don't have I'm probably not the best person to answer that. So I've given you what, I've, what I know, mm -hmm. um, and I'll let you pray into the spirit on, on that. Thank you. Great. Well, we can... We can take about ten minutes, and then we'll we'll close we'll close out. Lord, as I heard uh, Eric share, it reminded me that this part of our world is under tension, as he stated. There are different ideologies, and uh, it's just like the philosophies of men to veer from what is spiritual and scriptural truth. Lord, there is so much tension with regard to uh, people from the Middle East, from those who are of Jewish background, those who are of Arabic, Arabic background. Uh, Lord, there is the pressure that has been applied to this city in terms of financial difficulties because of trying to respond to so many different people who have come. And so Lord, it is very difficult to know how to reach such a complex and multipleistic kind of society, a, a, a metropolitan area. But Lord, you love each and every one of those people. And consequently, you are drawing individuals of leadership who spiritually have relationship with you and somehow creatively and anointedly, would you move in the hearts of these who have been appointed for this season by your calling to reach beyond themselves to so many who are so different. Lord, it's just, seems frustrating at times, I'm sure, for Eric and for his team to look at people who uh, espouse a, an ideology that is so foreign to Christianity. And uh, we look at, at, at people whose even spiritual religious background is so different from what we know is the truth. Equip, Lord, we pray. Uh, empower, we pray. Give leadership, we pray. Anoint the efforts, we pray. And use this team as they continue to reach beyond themselves to those who are lost and die without hope. I pray this in Christ's name. Lord, I feel like there's been a theme today for the day of prayer throughout the calls. For me, just hearing momentum. And um, I just thank you for the Hesse's uh, for going to Berlin in 2015. And they're about to see, <laughs> about to have a whole decade of of just really investing in, in Berlin. And God, we just ask you that, Lord, as we ask you for a spreading, the gospel spreading, um, uh, Lord, like, like a, a contagious disease, <laughs> It spread, Lord, like just spread like wildfire. The 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 gospel, Lord. We ask for the tipping point, um, and we ask you to to let them see it. Do it in our day. Do it in our time. We pray. Make yourself known, Jesus. I do, Father, agree with these prayers of Alice's and think of all the different people groups and how you unite with one spirit. Um, I have a picture of a woman pointing in a direction. She's standing up high and a whole bunch of different people groups are there in Berlin listening why she points. And I pray, Lord, she is pointing to you the way the way to the Father. Would you work on the hearts of the various people in Berlin? Um, Lord, I know they like to drink their beer and it's October, 
but I pray that they would take a sip and have thoughts of you and have joy that they wouldn't even maybe need a much, much beer <laughs> that you would just give them um, joy from one sip, Lord, because it's from you and your spirit that unites people. So we pray that for Berlin. I pray that for um, this team that Eric is um, going to receive from you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, I am um, so excited to hear about the spiritual openness. I love that, you know, after nearly a decade in country, um, Eric can say it's not the same as when we first came. Um, there is a shift in the atmosphere. There's a spiritual openness. Um, maybe the hunger, we could say, is closer to the surface. And so we bless that hunger. Um, and we just say, Lord, would, would no one be satisfied until they feast on you? Would you continue to draw people to yourself? And we ask as you draw those people to yourself that you in the power that you have as almighty God, would you push back the darkness? We say no to violence, to drugs, to, to all of the vice that also seems to be on the rise. We declare that those vices are simply spiritual hunger gone awry. And we just ask that it would be utterly distasteful to those who try it and that they would continue to hunger and thirst for righteousness. Would you awaken your church there? Those that are asleep, would you, Holy Spirit, blow over them and awaken them to offer the bread of life to those around them? So much so, Lord, I love I love Eric's audacious vision that um, wouldn't it be just like you to take a city like Berlin and use it as um, as a launching pad, as a place from which Christianity is exported. Make it so, Lord Jesus. Would we dream bold dreams and pray audaciously? because we know that we cannot long for more than you can give us. Yeah, I agree. God, you did this with the Roman Empire. It was as godless as anything we have now. And you turned it into the way that you spread the gospel in a lot of ways. And I thank you for that, but I also pray for it to happen again in the great cities of the world in Berlin and all the other great cities that, that are represented, but today especially, that Berlin will be special in that, that there will be a flavor or a scent or something about the kingdom of God that's originating there that will be special, different, that it'll be um, alive and attractive and safe, and um, yeah, and I also just pray for the immigrants there and how frightening it must be to see politics turning the way that it it does both there and here in the United States and elsewhere in the world. They are afraid and they're going back to something they felt safe with and it's not good. It's not good for them and it's not good for the world. And I just pray that you will satisfy them with something else. Somebody said that Cinda, I think, the, that they won't mm -hmm. be satisfied with anything but you. And I pray that you will mm -hmm. show them your love so that they will know what it is you have to offer, that you have everything to offer them the the very meaning of their own creation. And so many of them don't believe that. And I just pray that you will show them in Jesus' name. I see them, Lord, stepping into the promised land, going through the River Jordan, um, away from the 40 years and stepping into this new life. 
Thank you, Lord. We know you can do it. And we trust and have faith in you alone, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Dan, for hosting. And thanks, Eric, for sharing. It was, it was a delight. Sorry, I was late. <laughs> We're not done yet. Dan's going to Dan's I'm gonna, gonna finish. I've got one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that I wrote for for Berlin back uh, when we were when I was praying with them regularly was a doxology. A doxology is a a poem about the Trinity and the Trinity in a place, and so that's what this is. Praise God, the Creator of this land and all who walk on it, all who sleep under it, and all who contend for the control of this place. God will win over all contenders by His glorious power. Power hungry will continue to sink and fail. The critics will be ashamed. Their mechanical explanations will fall in pieces. They will be forced to concede their arguments and abandon their structures. That's powerful. Praise Jesus, who redeems and saves, who overwhelms death with life, law with grace, Fear with love. His name is power to make new the cities of the earth and undermine every corrupt structure of his opponent who is defeated of old and whose destiny is destruction. Praise the Holy Spirit, the wind and breath who awakens the church with power but out of despair. Mm -hmm. And faith out of unbelief. Hmm. Who comforts those who mourn? Who gives sight and hearing, understanding, wisdom, and strength? Praise the Spirit whose presence is joy, peace, and healing. Glory to God the Father, to Jesus the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, Wonderful. Thank you all for, for joining, for uh, upholding not only our family and our team, but the city with your prayers. We really appreciate it. Thank you for ministering to me, and to, pe to the people of Berlin. You're welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Really wonderful time. Thanks, everyone. All right. Signing off here. All right. Okay. Bye, Eric. Sleep well. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone.